Hi guys, welcome back to June this vlog and again. For this video, yeah, let's go to Russia once again. Our favorite country and then this is another country or another like technology that the Russia will offer to us in this video. And the title of this video that we need to do some reaction for today. And by the way, pasiba to our Russian friend. The Caspian Sea Monster, the Soviet super plane that ready to rattle America. Oh my god, this is the title itself. Like, so crazy, amazing. And credit to the owner also with the video as always. I really love him also. Military update, I'll put in the description box below so that you can connect also with military update. And allow me to read some information what he's written on his description that this is the speed and stealth ground effect vehicles also known as the Ikranoklans are a sort of hybrid between airplanes and ships. Hmm. Wow, this is like a good information. They move over water without actually touching it. Wow, crazy. I really am so excited to watch this video. The International Maritime Organization classifies them as ships, but in fact, they are derived their unique high speed capabilities from the fact that they skim the surface of the water of height between 1 and 5 meters, 3 or 16 feet. They take advantage of aerodynamic principle called ground effect. Oh my god, my description also of what a military update is putting in this description so that you can read and know also about the information with regards to this video guys because this video took like a bit more uh, almost 14 minutes and this is long so let's get to it guys I don't want you to like <laughs> to hang in there long enjoy guys watching with this one and if you're new to my channel just click on the subscribe button click on the notification bell so that you'll be updated on our future uploads and if you have comments and just strong related to this video guys Drop it on the comment section. I'd love to read and respond to you all and connect also with military update. I'll put in the description box below so that you can connect also with the owner of the video. Enjoy, guys. Mabuhay the Caspian po. Sea Monster rises from the grave. The Soviet superplane that ready to rattle America. So excited. Hold on. <laughs> The Russians built the first large-scale WIG craft in the 1960s. The 500-ton, so-called, Caspian Monster, remained secret to the West until the late 1980s. There wow. have been at least That's eight not... modifications to the single craft built, the number on the tail indicating the modification number. The Caspian Monster prototype is reported to have crashed and sunk in the Caspian Sea in 1980 after 14 years of service. The craft design is ideally suited for rapid transportation of forces, with a greater payload capacity, greater range and less fuel consumption than conventional aircraft, whilst oh, operating wow, at a comparable speed. A development of the Caspian Monster, the Loon design apparently went into military service in 1989, but this craft is now reported to have been withdrawn from military activities. The craft is propelled by eight NK-87 turbofan engines, and the craft is armed with six anti-ship missiles. A I number of non-military versions of the Loon five. craft are currently proposed. It is understood that the Loon craft currently under construction was originally conceived as a military craft but is being converted to a rescue craft named the SPASATEL-2. This has similar performance characteristics to the original Loon craft with a displacement of 400 tons, a cruising speed of 450 to 550 km per hour and a range of 4,500 km. The carrying capacity of this craft is up to 600 people. Oh, Other versions of the SPASTEL-2 wow, are also proposed. A, a passenger carrying craft, the Loon P, and a cargo carrying craft, the MTER. Akrano plans these plane ship hybrids fly over water an altitude of just wow, a few cool. meters, well below the detection limit of most naval and shore defense radars and below the operational altitude limit of air-to-air -air missiles. Akrano plans can transport well over a hundred of fully equipped troops, as do large amphibious assault ships. Unlike such ships, however, Akrano plans can travel at up to 500 km per hour and are invulnerable to most anti-ship missiles designed to attack much slower targets. Akrano plans are also far more efficient than transport aircraft of similar takeoff weight and lifting capability. The enhanced lift and reduced drag permits roughly a 30 to 40 percent increase in payload carried over greater distance and with less fuel consumption compared to conventional aircraft. Oh. Types include Orleanic, Eaglet, Transport Akranoplans, and the Loon, Harrier, Attack Akranoplan armed with the Musket, Mosquito, supersonic anti ship missiles with the top speed of 3,000 km per hour. 
Jane's Intelligence Review writes about this missile. The Moskit was the world's first supersonic sea-skimming anti-ship missile. It oh. preceded any comparable Western missile by almost two decades and, today, probably no anti-ship missile causes more anxiety in Western navies. Really? It is the combination yeah. of extremely high terminal speed, low approach altitudes and terminal maneuvering in the Russian 3M80 Moskit, Mosquito. Otherwise known in Western circles as the SSN-22 Sunburn, which raises serious questions about the viability of many existing shipborne defenses. The Loon was designed to evade all anti-ship and anti-aircraft defenses and engage its targets from 90 kilometers away. Jane's writes, the most unusual of the vessels armed with Moskit is the Project 905 Loon, backquote Utka, wing and ground effect, wig, flying boat developed by the R.E. Alekiev Central Hydrofoil Design Bureau in Nizhny Novgorod. The second aircraft of this type, the S-31 completed in 1993, is armed with three twin Moskit launchers arrayed along its upper spine. The S-31 is fitted with a complicated array of fire control radars on its tail which may be adaptations of the monolith fire control radar used on the Moskit armed warships. This is incredibly amazing guys. The information given, oh my goodness. The Alekiev Central Hydrofoil Design Bureau in Nizhny wow. Novgorod developed these remarkable aircraft during the Khrushchev era. Nikita Khrushchev hoped that this new technology would give the USSR a decisive edge over the US carrier forces. And for a while it did. After Brezhnev replaced Khrushchev, the Alekiev Design Bureau has quickly gone out of favor and the new party leadership for political and personal reasons gradually terminated the Akranoplan program. Nevertheless, during the relatively short time of sufficient funding Alekiev and his engineers were able to create by far the largest and most deadly military Akranoplans ever constructed anywhere in the world. Wow. To this day no effective Seriously. defense against these hybrid aircraft has been developed by any naval power. What makes Akranoplan such an efficient years. flying machine and such a difficult target? Akranoplans, or wing and ground, wig, affect aircraft, glide over water or any other smooth surface by forming a cushion of air under its short but very wide wing. Wow. For initial takeoff most Akranoplans wow. use additional engines installed in the nose section of the aircraft. These engines are used to create the cushion of air under the wing and help the aircraft gain the initial speed. After the takeoff only the cruise engine is enabled, usually a tail-mounted turboprop or turbofan engine. The entire fully loaded huge aircraft is propelled at high speed by this single engine, making the Akranoplan the most efficient transport vehicle for its speed class. Jane's explains the flight mechanism behind the Akranoplan. The nose-mounted jet engines have pivoted exhaust nozzles. During takeoff the jet exhaust streams are directed beneath the wing to boost the ram air pressure beneath the wing. On changing to cruising flight the nozzles are redirected to provide horizontal thrust, accelerating the craft until cruising speed is reached, the takeoff jet units are then shut down. The same procedure is used when landing the craft to reduce hydrodynamic loading. The fuselage nose location of the jet units allows their intakes to be positioned in the contours of the nose in such a way as to minimize aerodynamic resistance. Flying at an altitude of just a few meters in a cranoplan is virtually invisible to air defense radars until it's too close. Oh, Naval radars designed good. to detect other ships will also be useless against a cranoplan since such radars are not Genius. designed to reliably track targets moving at 10 times the speed of a ship. A cranoplans fly to low to be engaged by air-to-air -air missiles from carrier-based fighters. Oh. Even acquiring and targeting an Akrano plan for a fighter pilot would be a monumental task given the altitude resolution restrictions of air-to-air -air radars and the background M noise created by radar signals reflected off the surface of the water. Uh -huh. Air-to-ground radars and missiles carried by multipurpose fighter bombers such as the F-A-18 are also ill-suited to engage such fast-moving ground targets. In other words, the Akrano plan is unlike any potential target and no air defense system has been even developed to counter this threat. A common question is how do Akrano plans operated in the rough seas and how can amphibious assault versions of Akrano plans navigate minefields and other defenses near the shore? Right. Oh. Akrano plans do glide just a few meters over the water surface, but they okay. can also leave the ground effect zone and gain an altitude of up to 300 meters, enough to clear any obstacles the ground effect flight means higher fuel consumption, but it allows an Akranoplan a certain degree of flexibility, 
not as much as a plane but considerably more than a ship or a hovercraft. A total of five Orleanic Akranoplans have been built for the Russian Navy, of which three remain in service. Ground effect vehicles, also known as Akranoplans, are a sort of hybrid between airplanes and ships. They move over water without actually touching it. The International Maritime Organization classifies them as ships, but, in fact, they derive their unique high-speed capabilities from the fact that they skim the surface of the water at a height of between 1 and 5 meters, 3 to 16 feet. They take advantage of an aerodynamic principle called ground effect. This combination of speed and stealth, their proximity to the surface while flying makes them difficult to detect by radar, got the attention of the Soviet military which experimented with several variants of the concept during the Cold War. Their deployment on the vast inland body of water between the Soviet Union and Iran led to them acquiring the nickname Caspian Sea Monster. Uh, okay. The Loon Akrano plan was one of the last designs to come out of the Soviet ground effect vehicle program. Longer than an Airbus A380 Superjumbo and almost as tall, despite its size and weight, the Loon was capable of reaching speeds of up to 550 km per hour. 340 miles per hour, thanks to eight powerful turbofans located on its stubby wings. This formidable machine was even able to take off and land in stormy conditions, with waves of up to two and a half meters. Its intended mission was to conduct lightning seaborne attacks with the six anti-ship missiles it carried in launch tubes placed at the top of its hull. Star attraction The Akrano plan that has been moved to Durban is the only one of its class ever completed and entered service in 1987. A second loon, unarmed and assigned to rescue and supply missions, was at an advanced state of completion when, in the early 1990s, the whole program was cancelled and the existing loon withdrawn from service. After 30-plus years of inaction, getting this sea beast back on the move was no easy task, requiring the assistance of rubber pontoons and a carefully coordinated choreography involving several vessels. Loon will be the star of Durbent's planned Patriot Park, a military museum and theme park that will display different sorts of Soviet and Russian military equipment. Oh, Construction good. of the park is expected to start later in 2020. For the time being, oh, Loon so will sit good. alone on the beach. It looks set to become a new highlight for visitors to Durban. The city yes, claims to be the oldest incredible. continuously inhabited settlement oh. in Russian territory. Its citadel and historical center have been designated by UNESCO as World Heritage Sites. Second That's wave, cool. Loon, cool. will add to the attractions of a region that, up until the coronavirus pandemic, had seen a number of initiatives to open it up to tourism, including the launch of cruise itineraries in the Caspian Sea. Wow. When it opens, Durbent's Patriot Park won't be the only Russian museum exhibiting an Akrano plan. A much smaller Orleanic-class Akrano plan can be found at the Russian Navy Museum in Moscow. Wow. While ground-effect vehicles fell out of favor in the past few decades, the concept has been experiencing a resurgence of late developers in Singapore, the United States, uh -huh. China and Russia are working on different projects that aim to bring Akrano plans back to life, Bravo. although with rather more peaceful purposes. One of them is Singapore-based WI Get Works, whose Airfish 8 prototype builds upon groundwork done by German engineers Hanno Fischer and Alexander Lippisch during the Cold War. The Russians built the first large-scale wig craft in the 1960s. The 500-ton, so-called, Caspian Monster, remained secret to the West until the late 1980s. There have been at least eight modifications to the single craft built, the number on the tail indicating the modification number. The Caspian Monster prototype is reported to have crashed and sunk in the Caspian Sea in 1980 after 14 years of service. The craft design is ideally suited for rapid transportation of forces, with a greater payload capacity greater range and less fuel consumption than conventional aircraft, whilst operating at a comparable speed. A development of the Caspian Monster, the Loon design apparently went into military service in 1989, but this craft is now reported to have been withdrawn from military activities. The craft is propelled by eight NK-87 turbofan engines, and the craft is armed I with six anti-ship like, uh, missiles. Repeated already, guys. A number I will of non-military I will cut in here because I think the video was uh, repeated already, so... That was incredibly amazing, guys. I cannot imagine. The design of it is like a dragonfly watching with that one. And then imagine uh, they, can, uh, they can really put a design, this like Caspian Sea Monster. But those gear, oh my goodness. Like they are very smart and like brilliant making with those.
one guys it's like mind blowing watching with that one and it's like it's too huge my it's like very beautiful this is like sometimes it tells us that the russian may rejuvenate the uh, caspian monster it was a person back in the day really person back in the day and if the russian would have been able to make and maintain lots of them that would serve for them for good imagine how they make a few of them caspian monster but equipped with hypersonic missiles oh my god that was more incredible because russian russian like a military or russian like the way how they make their weaponry is so advanced it's so incredible so that it's like watching with it like it's so mind-blowing this is such incredible watching like this video guys it's really like giving you an idea and giving you back in, back of the day that these people can create such an incredible like weaponry or missiles or like this type of prototype like the Caspian Sea Monster it really gives you a mind blowing and this is so amazing wow that was so wonderful and thank you so much though, for the owner of this video military update and if you want to see the full video guys it's in the description box below and if you like this video same as I did just give a massive thumbs up like and share subscribe also with my channel and this is Junris Blagadag React saying stay humble stay passive guys passive back to our Russian friends if you want to visit also my second uh, channel guys it's in the description box below and thank you so much have a good day everyone and see you in my next video video reaction if you have some comments and suggestion related to this video drop it in the comment section i'd love to read and respond to you all and make your video requests have a good day everyone bye bye again